Welcome to the channel Trimit Color. We are on process of making this scene. In the previous three videos, I showed you how to model this hut, how to model this tree, and how to unwrap these objects in Maya. If you want to check any of those tutorials, the links are given below in the description. In this session, I am going to sculpt it in ZBrush. If you are very new in ZBrush, you can check out my last video that was the introduction of ZBrush and then you can directly jump into this tutorial. Also if you want to know how to model the base mesh of this tree in Maya, both the links are given below. So let's get started. First of all, I am going to the tool and clicking on import and browsing my file and just dragging on the viewport. I have modeled this base mesh in Maya. The very first thing you need to do after this is click on the edit or press T in the keyboard. Then only the model will be editable. Otherwise you cannot even rotate the model. It will be a flat object. Now clicking on the material and taking matte cap gray. This is my personal preference. You can select any other material. That is absolutely fine. Now going to the geometry and clicking on subdivide approximately 5 times. So I have increased the polygon 5 times. Coming back to the 4th subdivision level and going down and clicking on morph target and clicking on store morph target. Through this button anytime we can come back to get this basic shape of this tree. So now coming back to the 5th subdivision level. Going to alpha and clicking on import. Through this button you can import any external alphas inside the ZBrush. So randomly I have downloaded some alphas and I am selecting one out of it. Going to the alpha menu and by clicking on this small circle you can dock it in this side. Clicking on modify and horizontal tile I am making it 2 and vertical tile also I am making it 2. Coming downward and clicking on masking. Open mask by alpha and clicking on mask by alpha and you can see on the viewport that the enter tree is masked by the alpha we have selected it is also getting the horizontal and vertical tiles as two now clicking on the deformation and coming to inflect and i'll just decrease the value and you can see all my active area is going inside by holding control and clicking outside I have deselected the mask coming back to the geometry and decreasing the subdivision to 4 now going to brush and pressing M in the keyboard and selecting more brush and I'm just drawing on the branches if you can remember in the morph target I have kept my basic shape as my source object. So now wherever I am painting that basic shape is coming out. Like this you can rectify all the deformed areas of this tree. So in the main tree trunk I am keeping the deformation, I am keeping the pattern and rest of the branches I am just morphing it. If you have noticed properly the border edges or the seams of the UVs are getting deformed the maximum. So I am trying to blend those areas giving it an even shape. Sometimes instead of using the morph brush I am using smooth brush just to blend that area. So once again I am repeating morph target is going to help you to get back your old shape what was there at the very starting before the deformation. I'll give a little bit time over here until unless the entire object is clean. Coming back to the fifth subdivision level and still if you can see some deformation you just need to smooth it and that's all. Once again coming to the alpha and coming to the modifiers and this time the horizontal tile 
and the vertical tiles I am making it 6 by 6 and once again coming to the masking option mask by alpha and clicking on mask by alpha you can see I am getting smaller pattern because I have increased the tiling and this is looking fine to me once again I am going to the deformation like the previous step I am doing it once again going to in flat increasing the value a little bit and then control and click outside to invert selection and now decreasing the value a little bit you can see I got a very nice pattern smaller pattern and this is what I wanted now once again I have to go to the mob brush and I have to repeat the last process what we did to paint and clean the entire object this time I'll speed up the process a little bit because this will be just a repetition now I think you can understand what is the benefit of using the morph target so you just keep the basic shape and anytime you can call it to the mob brush even you can call the entire object by clicking on the switch button just next to the morph target You also can smooth the areas where there are small deformations. Actually, there is no hard and fast rule which brush to use. After practicing the sculpting, after some time, you also will have your own preference of brushes. So definitely those brushes can be used. Here is one suggestion, if you have kept your morph target in the 4th subdivision level, make sure every time you are coming back to the 4th subdivision level and then you are using the morph brush, otherwise morph is not going to work in any other subdivision level. Alright. Now I am going to the light box, clicking on brush and I am taking slash brush, double clicking and you can see I got the brush and also the alpha. You can see like this we can create a slash mark on the geometry. So this brush can be useful to exaggerate our pattern on the tree, reducing the intensity a little bit. Let's give a mark. You can see I am getting a trail to my stroke. If it is not coming in your case, just press L in the keyboard and that is the shortcut of the lazy mouse. So this is a lazy mouse. You can see I am drawing the borders of each pattern and like this throughout the surface I am going to give these slash marks. I will keep on drawing throughout the surface. I will fast forward this process a little bit and then I will come back. Each tree can be different in pattern so we need to observe the tree and then we should decide the pattern. You can create your own pattern in Photoshop and that can be definitely used over here. You just can import that as JPEG file and can be used in ZBrush. But before that I am talking about the design. So the design of the patterns we need to observe from the nature. Each tree patterns I am sure will be different and accordingly we need to sculpt.
all right this is looking fine and i guess my mark making is almost complete now i'm holding shift and smoothing all the slash marks a little bit because otherwise these are looking too exaggerated so i don't want that it should be very much blended Okay, this is looking fine. Now I'm planning to create some stylized pattern. So coming back to my slash brush and trying to create some stylized pattern. Let's make another one in this area. Like this you can create a few more throughout the surface. In this area also let's create a similar kind of stroke. I will exaggerate it a little bit more. Now I am taking hard polish brush. Over here I am using a hotkey for this brush. You can go inside the brush and press H to get this H polish. While sculpting this side, that side is also affected. To get rid of that, you have to go to brush, auto masking and back face mask. You need to click on. Now you can see easily I can sculpt without deforming the other side. I am converting the shapes into small small planes to make it more stylized. Later on while texturing these edges are going to give us the impression of smaller detailing. While working with smaller areas I don't want to see the entire tree. So. I am holding Ctrl and Shift and then drag how much I want to see and you can see the rest of the part of the tree is hidden. So now I can concentrate more in this area. Like this, I will keep on working throughout the surface. I will convert everything into small small planes. These planes will add the mid level of detailing to your model. 
most of the time what I observed is we do good blocking we do good detailing good detailing in the sense the final level of detailing but we miss the mid level of detailing I have noticed this in so many students work so these small planes will add that mid level of detailing so this is a very crucial stage we should go through this process Here the most interesting part is because we are converting everything into planes after giving the lights while final rendering you can see all these plane change in the light and that will look very interesting at that time. So like this I will keep on sculpting throughout the surface and you can see I am not keeping any of the areas untouched. So I will go to the each and every smaller areas and I have to convert it into small planes. And this is a very time taking process, you really need patience to do this. You should invest a little bit time in this stage to get a good result. All the groups I have created that will get the dirt in the texture and all the planes I am creating those will get light in the texture and because in the geometry you are creating small small volume it will also get occlusion shadow and that will add a sense of realistic volume in the texture. Now once again holding Ctrl Shift and clicking outside to see the enter tree once again. But still I can see so much of areas are remaining. So again holding Ctrl and Shift and dragging to select the upper part. Alright and once again I will start 
sculpting. All these patterns are depending on the first alpha we have selected. So we projected alpha twice, once for the bigger detailing and the second time for the smaller detailing. Now I am exaggerating that alpha. The stylization of each tree will be different. For that you need to observe very carefully and accordingly best thing is if you are creating your alpha by yourself in Photoshop maybe. Then you will be able to create very unique kind of pattern. We have to concentrate one by one area. Over here you can see I am building up my volume by using the clay tube brush. This is one of the best brush to building up your volume. And once again I am converting it into planes. Now my standard brush is selected, I am going to alpha and clicking on import and let's import some alphas. Also make sure you are changing your stroke to drag rectangle. So my alpha is selected and now I will go close and we will just drag it. I am holding alt to get it inside because by holding alt it can be converted into Z subtract. Now holding shift I am smoothing it. Like this I will add the cracks in a couple of more areas. I guess you can understand this is not the highest level of sculpting. You have to give more time and have to break it more. In the mid stage while making the planes I could have given more time to it. But this is the process you should follow these things to sculpt. And once again, I am summarizing it. First, bigger level of detailing means bigger plane. Then mid level of detailing means smaller plane. And now, I am giving very small, small detailing to it. Small cracks, pores, etc. You also can see I am not using the same alpha everywhere. I have taken three different alphas and I am just changing it from place to place. We are very close to end this sculpting. So throughout the surface we have given so many marks. Bigger marks, smaller marks, tiny marks. For these series of tutorials this sculpting was very important and because of this mark making we will be able to create good maps in Substance Painter. In the later videos, I will also show you how to create these leaves. In the previous videos, we have seen how to model and unwrap this in Maya. In this video, we have seen how to sculpt it in ZBrush. And in the next video, we will see how to texture it in Substance Painter. And then how to render it by using Arnold in Maya. Okay, hope you enjoyed the session. And don't forget to subscribe for the future videos. Thank you very much for watching.